Good evening, Philippines. Tonight, we'll talk about fiscal and monetary policy. I am Yvonne de Sampoyan. And I am Vincent Esperio. And welcome to CBA TV. There have been many speculations as to why, what is fiscal policy? And tonight, we will talk about fiscal policy. Right? Yes, Vincent. We will talk about fiscal policy. And we know that fiscal policy refers to the measures employed by government to stabilize the economy, specifically the mani uh, manipulating the levels and allocation of taxes and government expenditures. So Vincent, would you mind to introduce our guest for tonight? Yes, definitely. Tonight, folks, we are going to talk about fiscal policy. And this speculation and question will be answered by a very special guest, a financial secretary from the government of the Philippines, Mr. Marjan Mabuti. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vincent. Thank welcome, you. Sir. Thank you for inviting me as your special guest tonight. Yes, the pleasure is ours. So, sir, can you give us an overview all about fiscal policy? Yes, of course. Fiscal policy was created by the government in order for us to have guidance spending and taxation. It's usually expansionary but can be contractional. Government can stand alone without taxes from coming from our Filipino citizens. Fiscal policy was created by the government for public spending and revenue collection. For example, when demand is low in the economy, the government can step in and increase its spending to stimulate demand or it can lower taxes to increase this disposable income for people as well as corporations. Ah, okay, sir. Um, sir, I have another question. Um, yes, where do the government spend our taxes? Yes, of course, Vincent. As we all know, that government does not start alone without the taxes coming from our Filipino yes, citizens. And of course, you could not be um, worried about your taxes because government allocate it not just for the welfare itself, but also for the welfare of all our Filipino citizens. Mm -hmm. For the government, for the Filipino who, could ne who is needed for uh, the help of the government, because government could not, um, without government, Fili Filipino we would not be um, united as we are aiming for our future, for the uh, improvement, for the development of our country. Yes, of course, that taxes will be used from different kind of sectors in our country, in our economy, and also to the government welfare, not just to our uh, government itself, but also to our people who is needed for uh, the help of the government. Because mm -hmm. government um, is uh, was uh, um, acted as the um, leaders for us to have a good flow of our taxes and uh, income, not just in the people, but also for the businesses are, who are engaging in, here in our in the Philippines. Yes, and uh, there, there are so-called so uh, government uh, agencies like the Department of Education yes. that is very important to our economy, for the growth of our economy, mm -hmm. and also to the development of our welfare, to the uh, health of our economy also. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we could not uh, stand alone because tax is the lifeblood of the government. Yes, that's right. That's why we are here. Uh, we are here tonight to inform our people that they do not want to worry about their taxes because it has been allocated by our government carefully and not just about what they are thinking about the fictions of our people who is um, uh, worried about their money, where did it uh, will go, or it is uh, it, our tax, is it our taxes that is allocated by the government carefully, or we couldn't answer this questions through, uh, through our, this talk show, not just for the welfare of our, uh, this show, but to have the um, information, to have the knowledge or an idea about their taxes, where it, 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 it goes after paying it into the BIR. Of course, we have so many infrastructures like the road uh, development of our roads from a uh, market to, to uh, market to highway, uh, for uh, easy, easy to bring their products from their place and to the uh, going to the market, so that uh, we could not uh, our 
the flow of our economy will be uh, faster, faster than what we have in the late uh, years, the past yes. years, of course. And now, sir, we will be entertained with some questions from the different universities of the Philippines. Please all welcome from the University of Santo Tomas, Ms. Vines Bertera. Good evening, sir. Well, my question is, what is the appropriate time frame over which to balance the government budgets? Yes, thank you for your awesome question, Ms. Vines, coming from the University of Santo Tomas. Of course, as the things equal, a government will suffer a deterioration in its budget balance with the economy weakness. Tax revenues decline and social spending will often increase, mm -hmm. allowing the government to balance its, its budget over the business cycle mm -hmm. and therefore to run the faces during decisions provides an automatic establishes stabilizations to the economy. The more so when government have put in place generous specific automatic stabilizers like an employment insurance. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you. And next, will be a, there will be a question from one of the students of University of the Philippines. Let's all welcome Ms. Ivlani Gaga. Okay, good evening, sir. Um, my question is, can discretionary fiscal policy generate a rise in aggregate demand? Thank you, Ms. Ivlani Gaga from the University of the Philippines. Yes, your question is very nice and is rendered tonight and will be answered so that our popular, our, uh, the people of the, uh, our country in the Philippines will be informed how do, the, um, how do the fiscal policy work and how does it uh, taxes generates and how does it use the recovery. Yes, this is one of the theoretical uh, questions that fueled an often better debate between fresh water and salt water economics during the recessions and recovery. It has been repeatedly by the unavoidable political context on the argument. Theoretically, the right answer is always, well, it is a compli complicated answer. As I said, as I say, as I see, it is a resounding yes. Um, okay. Um, so we have another question from the University of Atenea de Manila, Mr. Giovanni Emia. Let us all welcome. Good evening, sir. My question is, why it, it is government collect taxes? Thank you, Mr. Giovanni from the uh, Ateneo de Manila. Of course, th there is an importance in, coll in collecting taxes. The purpose of taxation is to finance government expenditure. One of the most important uses of taxes is to finance public goods and, goods and services, such as street lighting and street, street cleaning. Since public goods and services do not allow a non-payer to be excluded or allow exclusion by a consumer, there cannot be a market there cannot be a market in the good or service. And so they need to be provided by the government or a quasi government agency, which tend to finance themselves largely through taxes. Okay. Ah, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all hear a short information as to how did the fiscal policy exist in the Philippines. Let us hear from our very own Leo de Asis. Leo. The Philippines government main source of revenue are taxes with some non-tax revenue also being collected to finance fiscal deficit and debt. The Philippines relies on both domestic and external sources. Fiscal policy during the Marcos administration was primarily focused on indirect tax collection and on government spending on economic service and infrastructure development. The first Aquino administration inherited a large fiscal deficit from the previous administration but managed to reduce fiscal imbalance and improve tax collection through introduction of the 1986 tax reform program and the value-added tax. The Ramos administration experienced budget surpluses due to substantial gains from the massive sales of government assets and strong foreign investment in its early years. However, Estrada administration faced a large fiscal deficit due to the decrease in tax effort and the repayment of the Ramos administration debt to constructor and suppliers. During the Arroyo administration, the expanded value-added tax law 
was enacted national debt to GDP national uh, ratio based and and this and their spending on public infrastructure and other capital expenditure was observed. To you guys. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Leo. And we would like to thank our special guest for tonight, sir. Thank you for being here. Yes, Mr. Vincent and Ms. Sibon. Thank you for inviting thank me in this so show. It means my uh, great pleasure to be here as one of your special guests. The thank pleasure you. is all ours, Mr. Up next, we will talk about the retirement policy. Stay tuned here in CBN TV. You know what my business philosophy is, Reynolds? No, not exactly. To attain success, one must project success. That's why we use FedEx One, right? Right, they're flat rate shipping. Exactly. It makes us look top notch, but we know it's affordable. I need help with the groceries. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Ship a pack via FedEx Express Saver for as low as $7.50. countries don't seem to have any trouble selling to you, why can't you sell to them? We're Export Development Canada, EDC. We can show you how to start exporting or expand your export business. EDC. Take on the world. Moisture, now also in shampoo. More a splash. Thank you guys. Let me lend your ears for a while. Don't you know, in the Philippines, the Banco Central and Filipinas is the chief military authority that sits the wide ranging policy direction related to military policy. It is tasked to make policy decisions, particularly in money, credit, and banking. In at maintaining the stable price level conducive for promoting sustained growth and economic development. During the last few decades, wherever there has been a chief understanding of the role of monetary policy, a slightly higher inflation on account of accommodating monetary policy was permitted to facilitate faster economic growth. This old view of the role of monetary policy assumed the existence of a trade off between inflation. On one hand, unemployment and growth on the other. Back to you guys. Welcome, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. and gentlemen. And now we will tackle about monetary policy and new guests will entertain our questions. Let's all welcome a spokesperson of the Central Bank of the Philippines. Let's all welcome Mr. Georgine Andy. <laughs> welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. We all know that monetary policy is the controlling of supply and demand of money. Tonight, Mr. Andy will give us an overview of the monetary policy. Well, monetary policy refers to the action taken by the central bank and monetary authorities to regulate monetary aggregates such as money supply and interest rates in the economy. Mm -hmm. The conduct of monetary policy remains to be one of the central themes in applied macroeconomics and nearly all central banks and monetary authorities around the world have acknowledged the role of monetary policy as a key instrument in stabilization and growth in the economy. Thank you, sir. And now, let us hear from the voice of the representative from the Seville University, Ms. Ivy Jin Bissari. Good evening, everyone. My question is, how do central banks conduct their monetary policy? Uh, thank you for that wonderful question. Central banks are the national authorities responsible for the supplying currency and implementing monetary policy. Monetary policy is the series of actions taken by a central bank to determine the, the conditions under which it supplies the money that circulates in the economy, through which it, through which it influences the behavior of short-term interest rates. The goal of monetary policy has been a defining issue for economists and public opinion. 
since central banks were consolidated as entitled responsible for providing economies with currencies and implementing monetary policy mm -hmm. in line with academic progress and experience of the subject and the, under, the understanding of monetary policy has developed considerably the last few decades. Mm. What a wonderful answer, Mr. Andy. Yes, definitely. And, and next question, Vincent. Well, came from our very own Bukidnon State University, Mr. V. Borome. Um, good evening, sir. My question is, how transparent the Central Bank be? Well, let me just remind first, viewers, that there are two main reasons to favor transparency. The one which economists will always focus is that greater openness should make monetary policy more effective by tightening gears between central bank actions and market expectations. But there is another reason, one which real world central banks should never forget, the de democratic accountability. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Andika, but I have been wondering, what is the really the main difference between the fiscal policy and monetary policy? Oh, that, uh, that's a very easy question. Well, monetary policy involves changing the interest rate and influencing the money supply, while fiscal policy involves the government changing the rules and levels of government appealing to influence and aggregate demand in the economy. Mm -hmm. But they are both used to pursue policies of higher economic growth are controlling inflation. Mm, I see. Oh, okay, sir, I see. And sir, it is a great pleasure having you asking our in the show. So thank you very much, sir. Sir, thank you. So with that, we are going to thank our special guest for tonight from the Central Bank and from the government. Yes. And especially for those uh, representative of the French University. Yes, thank you everyone for coming thank here. Thank you guys. And for the viewers, thank you so much. And stay tuned always here in The Green TV! Makisabay, makihataw, makisayaw sa hingog, Beats Club. Handayan Mobile Sound System. You're listening to the beat, the music, but exclusive mix by... Okay. Tonight? That <laughs>